Hey, what's going on? Hey, uh, hi. Hey, guys. Uh, can you start by introducing yourself? Um, I know you as one of the developers behind Kingdom. Um, maybe you can start by telling us your name as well as uh, perhaps you know a little bit about the game you you uh, helped uh, create. I'm gonna I'm gonna start it up over here. I'm gonna kind of play it in the background. Um, folks in chat, if you have any questions, kind of like hold them until a bit later. And um, what do you call it? We'll get to your questions towards the end. All right, you can take it away. Okay, right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Marco, and uh, I'm one of the two developers of Kingdom, and the other one is Thomas Vandenberg. So from the logo, I'm the licorice one, and uh, Thomas is uh, Noyo. So yeah, now you, you'll see what Kingdom is about. Um, Kingdom was uh, originally developed by Thomas as a flash game ah. around like three years ago. Yeah. Oh, so it was a flex game before. So could yeah, you play it, it online? Game. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually still available, the, the, the old version oh, on wow. his website. Yeah. And uh, well, the story is kind of funny as in like, uh, we, we didn't know each other at the time, and um, a friend of mine just sent me a link to this Flash version, and I really liked it. And at the time, I was a mobile developer, a game for games. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just sent an email to Thomas saying, hey, I really liked your game, and maybe we can port it to like mobile and make it you know, commercial or something. And he was like, yeah, that's a cool idea. So we started working together. And he lives in Amsterdam. And I live in Reykjavik in Iceland. Oh, wow. So, yeah. How, how so far I'm, away are those two areas? Is it close enough well, to be able to like collaborate? Uh, yeah, locally? it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, one hour during uh, winter and two hours during summer. So it's fine. Um, so yeah, then we started working. And then we uh, applied for the Nordic Game Program, which is like a, a funding program for um, the Nordic countries in Europe mm -hmm. for developing games. And uh, we won, so then we got some money, and then we decided to make uh, an expanded version, you know, for also PC, Mac, and all kind of platforms. So. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, so and then we... <laughs> could you explain a little bit about that? So is, is, is this, because I know Canada has something very similar where, you know, they're the... the um, the government or you know some body of the government is trying to help um put money into like i want to say the gaming arts i don't know what better way to explain it it sounds like they've got something similar is that is that what it is uh kind of so the naughty game program is like it's a an independent organization oh okay uh, but they ask all the nordic countries uh, governments to, to for, for money basically to I see this. and they get some and then you know they uh, distribute it to the winners the, the most interesting games uh, but I think it's actually this this year is the last time they they, they would do that it's kind of the end of the cycle for this program oh I see okay yeah um, so yeah so then we we also found a publisher which is raw fury. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the beginning of uh, this year. Are they um, also uh, Nordic as well? Yes, they are based in Sweden. Ah, I see. Uh, yes, actually. So one of the guys in the in the Raw Fury was my ex boss here in Iceland. He's Icelandic. I was working in a game company at the time, mm -hmm. uh, like four years ago. So then he moved there and then he found out that I was working on Kingdom and really liked it. So we started working together again. And they also funded us with additional money to finish the game. And yeah, so now here we are. Wow. And so yeah. um, now I have not had actually had a chance to uh, look at the original title that you mentioned was around like about three years ago. Um, yeah, yeah. Is More. it vastly different from this? I imagine the concept is similar, but uh, it was updated to um, maybe the graphics. Like, what what was the major uh, d difference between the two? Mm, 
So yeah, the, the base mechanics are the same. Mm -hmm. um, graphics have been almost remade completely. Mm -hmm. Even if the style is the same, it's Thomas is the artist, so mm -hmm. he, he draws everything. And uh, so you can see it, it's the same style, but uh, there's much more, uh, many more sprites and a lot of more stuff graphically. In oh, the game. I see. A lot of more effects. And then, of course, we expanded a lot on the gameplay. There's much, much more content in this one than uh, the original version, as well as the end game. Is, is... Oh, I see. What was it? Was the previous one almost like a endless? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, game? that was. Yeah, that was only an endless uh, kind of game. The new one is also, if you want, you can play endlessly. It's, you know, you're not required to finish it, but ah, there's an end goal. You mean that is yeah. if you don't get rid of the portals or whatever? I did actually notice that because yeah. uh, the first time I think I beat this game, it was like on day 40-something, and I was looking at the achievements, and it looked as though, um, you know, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, achievements suggest that there can be many, many, you can play up to like 100 days or something for like yeah. the highest yeah. achievement. Yes, yes. So, so, what was your role in it, and what was Thomas's role, um, you know, at the start of this development? Like, once you guys met, what was, how did you guys divide up the roles, and, um, you know, I, I guess, what pieces are you guys responsible for? So, I am the main coder, I would say, mm -hmm. um, and he's the artist. We did game design together. Mm -hmm. uh, we took all the, the game gameplay decisions together, and uh, he also coded uh, towards the end quite a bit, and mainly uh, like shaders and graphics effects. Ah. Um, yeah. So it's just the two of us. So, but when we we have also a, a musician, but not in the team. Is uh, we outsourced music and sound effects, but. Mm -hmm. As you know, this probably the music is fantastic. Uh, oh uh, yeah, no, absolutely. The the yeah, music yeah. Uh, definitely draws a um, some kind of it, almost like an eerie. So I like the transition. Like in the morning, you can tell it's like kind of safe, everything's nice, and then it gets dark like it is right now, and you have the sense of oh god, are they gonna come and attack me right now? Am I ready? Am I gonna yeah. die? <laughs> exactly. So his name is Amos uh, Roddy. Uh, uh -huh. He's uh, been working also on other games, and I'm completely amazed by but his work. He's super nice, super good at what he does. So we were very lucky with this uh, because we we got a lot of uh, requests from musicians to work with us, and then we kind of <laughs> picked him. Oh really? Semi randomly, I would say, because we had, we had so many. So, uh, but we were very lucky with them. So, so what what is it? Um, you know, with uh, how is the reception of this game? I know it was released. I want to say about two years ago now, right? Or not two years ago? What was I saying? Two weeks ago. Ah, <laughs> you mean? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> two years ago was the flash version, so I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, to, yeah, it was uh, amazing. It was uh, well beyond our expectations. Mm -hmm. um, so we we hit uh, break even in one day. And, oh really? Uh, Holy crap! Day. Yeah, it was it was incredible. People loved it, and it exploded on YouTube and Twitch as well. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, we got you know. Sip from the Oxcast and many other big YouTubers. Oh my God! Uh, playing this and uh, a lot of uh, streamers. Now, did you and think it was the just... game was going to be as big as it has become now? No, or... no, no, not at all. Because still, it's it's a bit of a uh, I would say like a niche game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you can right. see from uh, it's really interesting to if you. If you read the comments on the Steam forums mm -hmm. of Kingdom and the reviews and everything, uh, 
like all the positive reviews start with I love this game, it's fantastic because blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And then you have the negative reviews, which also starts with I love this game, but, but... <laughs> there's something because of course we cannot, you know, make everyone happy. There's always, but still, it's not like there's no one saying, "Oh, this game is, you know, shit." Or whatever, you know. It's right, like, right, right. Didn't happen, so we are we are super, super happy. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, so when when this game was in development, um, you know, I can imagine there was a set of fans um, already, uh, you know, around. I guess. Because they must have played the Flash game, um, you know, maybe found your website or whatever. Were you getting a lot of early feedback from those guys? Yes, we we managed to retain a lot of uh, core fans from, mm-hmm. from the old one uh, throughout development. And uh, many of them actually helped us during the last few months of development to, uh, with, you know, testing and mm. getting feedback from them. And they were super nice and you can read the whole all their names on in the credits ah and, yes yes uh, i remember I, I recall seeing uh quite a few names on there yeah that's like the supporters list is like a uh, hundred or more people and that's the though they are the ones that the core fans of the game oh wow so yeah it's actually it's it's really weird because the flash game was super popular in brazil for some ah. reason Mm-hmm. Uh, so many of those also managed to <laughs> switch to the new one. And I don't. That's really, really weird. That's really interesting. Well, you know, you never know where a game is going to end up being uh, super popular. And oh yeah. I, that's, that's, uh, I mean, even for myself, um, I recall seeing the game um, posted on a couple places. So I, I usually end up playing um, indie games on Sundays, and it's always interesting. There's, there's usually. You know, because of green light and all these other mechanisms that are now in place, whether it's Kickstarter, green light through um, Twitch or not Twitch, uh, God, uh, Steam, um, you have a a large number of games that get, um, I guess, released, all with various uh, ranges of quality, various ranges of people actually testing them before releasing it. So it's always it's always a gamble. Um, to like go and buy a game that's more than like five, ten, fifteen dollars, or occasionally, you know, twenty-five dollars, because you never really know um, yeah. what it is that you're about to end up playing. Um, and so I remember when I first, you know, started playing this game, I'm like, okay, this looks kind of interesting. The artwork immediately grasped me, the music grasped me, and um, then you know, slowly coming to the realization that this is kind of a base building slash survivor game. <laughs> where your almost your purpose is to kind of protect your people because the people in this game are what you know get you to succeed or die horribly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like for example, you know, if if some of your guys decide for whatever reason, I mean they're AI, right? To mm-hmm. go and visit. Um, you know, they, they end up going on one side of the wall, but you're get, getting attacked on the other side. How do you deal with that? It's it, there's a lot of there's a lot of management involved with it, and a lot of decision making. Now, yeah, yeah. W- was this something that you focused on, like the the it, it, in the game, or is this kind of um, was the, the focus on the strategy first, or did the strategy kind of come out from the players? Um, no, there was quite a bit of. Uh, work and brainstorming around the strategy mm-hmm. during development, but I would say that a lot of things came out during the last two months just from the feedback of those you know hundred players that were uh, the alpha version, mm-hmm. and then we figure out how to basically improve the strategy. Uh, how you, how players can use strategy, you know, to, to win the game and mm-hmm. all the, all the things they can do. So a lot of stuff came out from that period, I would say, because we probably didn't realize uh, earlier how deep the game uh, could have been, you know, in, mm. in a strategy, in a sense, strategic sense. 
And yeah. then we realized that through the players, and then we tried to exploit it, basically. Oh, nice. Yeah, and, and, and it does, it, it's surprisingly deep. Um, some of the elements in the game remind me for whatever reason of some of these base building games that came out on mobile devices a long time ago um things like the like i've never played hobo hotel but maybe similar to that or uh, the game where like you know the game dev game on your mobile device i yeah. thought it was going to be like that except there's actual moving around, like you actually have a character in this game unlike those other ones that aren't exactly the same but kind of have the same kind of um uh management aspect to it um here you're either the princess or the king you actually see the the players you got to pay them you got to buy them certain um you got to give them roles right and hope yeah. that they make you money there's almost an economy involved um so let me ask you something in terms of the future of the game and i'm sure there's yeah. a lot of people who are really interested to know about this <laughs> is there going to be an update to this with more more stuff do you have any future plans already in the works? Anything uh, that you've announced, I, I should ask. Yes. Um, so <laughs> I, I have to be very careful what I say, but sure, sure, yeah. Uh, yes, there are plans, and yes, there will be a content update. Um, so we are, we announced the Xbox version. Mm -hmm. We got a deal with Microsoft, oh, and. Nice. Uh, probably we will uh, work on a you know solid content update for the xbox version that will that also means for the pc version we will just do you know uh, uh, uh the same the same day we will release also for pc again and uh, so that that should bring a lot of content but maybe we will also have another one uh earlier because that that probably will happen around March or April, the Xbox mm -hmm. version. Mm -hmm. But we will have probably something else earlier, within the year, I would say. Now we are we are pushing a few updates. It's just you know about fixing and uh, ah, yes, touching, yes, yes. you know, like balancing and this kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I would say we we are not abandoning the game at all. We are we are committed to to work on it for for. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yeah, that's uh, that's a plan. Yeah, I know people are. There's a lot of people who are, are going to be dying to see um, more. I know, like at the end of this game, I was like, I definitely want to play this again. I want to hit those new achievements. But you know, there's people out there who've played so much of this game up until this point that mm -hmm. the only thing that's going through their mind is, when can I get more? There's yeah. always uh, there's an addiction you've created, and with that yes. probably comes some <laughs> some problems, <laughs> I guess. Um, I hope no yeah, one's absolutely. no one's saying too much on on uh, social media or your forums. Like, guys, when is it gonna happen? I can imagine the oh, pressure. Oh, it, it started the day after we released. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, God. yeah. <laughs> it was funny because uh, we we released a hotfix patch just mm -hmm. the day after to fix a couple of bugs, and then we posted something on the forums, and all the replies were like, "So is this adding, you know, new content?" <laughs> I was like no. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. That was the first thing I I, I wondered because I did see a, a a patch update. Um, I subscribed to this thing where like anytime uh, one of the games updates, like in my yeah. uh, inventory, in my Steam inventory, like I get a little message because you know one of the things that's always interesting about indie games is you know like I mentioned earlier, there's just so many out there today, um, and a lot of them you know they create their game. And sometimes the game isn't that great, and sometimes it's really good. But in both of those cases, you never know if there's new content that's going to be released. And sometimes that's a good thing, but if the game's really good, you never know, like, you know, a year from now, this game could be, like, five times better. Because I don't know what ideas in your mind. I mean, just, you know, a great example of that might be Minecraft. You know, the game was very simple, and it turned into so much more. Um, yes. Yeah, we have, we have a lot of ideas that actually <laughs> we, have a, we have a very long backlog in our Trello board. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's did, super long. Did you long. say Trello? Yes. yes oh, that's a that's a great tool, by the way. A lot of uh, we have a lot of yeah. software engineers uh, who 
uh, both you know in school, out of school, amateur who watch the stream, and we're big fans of that uh, that tool yeah. ourselves. It's really good. Yes. So yeah, we can just you know <laughs> go over that backlog and and start implementing stuff. So. Excellent. Excellent. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. is there um, so what kind of so let, uh, how well, what's your background? What is Thomas's background? Um, in relation to, you know, software development or art yeah. or various things. Like, what kind of background do you guys come from? Well, I've been in games since I was 12. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am 40, so I'm not super young. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. I'm 31. No, no. It's okay to be old and game. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But I look much, much younger than 40, so I'm fine. There you go. <laughs> See, that's what matters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, I went through the whole thing. I, I started on a Sinclair Spectrum mm -hmm. with 48 kilobytes of RAM, this kind of stuff. Oh, my God. Uh, that, Did you yeah. make games that time? at that time? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize uh, that was a thing. I mean, I know it oh, is yeah. a thing, but... Um, I can imagine that being very difficult, like managing resources, etc. Yes. And then, you know, went through Amiga and uh, then moved to PC. Wow. Uh, everything, everything, you know, 90s. So how has game development changed? Um, it changed a lot. <laughs> was the transition like difficult? Because... You know, that's always something that I wonder myself. I'm a software engineer, too. And, you know, the thing that I always wonder is, well, you know, um, is programming, like programming when I first started school, uh, the major difference I saw was now, nowadays um, app development. And now maybe not so much app development, but more, yeah, things are more app-like. Things are... Um, more often run on servers not owned by by you personally they're owned by somebody else um, yes there's a lot of these little changes that have taken place um, how likely am I to see though like a huge leap from that once again in the next 10 years from your experience well that's, uh, that's a difficult question <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure of course the internet changed a lot of things uh, also for game development, but I would say that probably one of the biggest leaps was uh, the introduction of uh, things like you know UDK and Real Unity, mm -hmm. this kind of tools. So I spent a lot, a lot of time in, in the past creating my own 3D engine, my own 2D engine. You know, uh -huh. you always started oh, from sure. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, there were like libraries around, but. You had to create all your tools and all this stuff. The tool but, chain, the whole like yeah, IDs, exactly. etc. Yes. Which there actually... was no Git. There was no, you know, version control. So it was just a mess if you were, were mm. working with someone else. So yeah, there are a lot of things that are very different now. Now, is um, would you? So actually, that brings me to a, another question, which is, um, with the introduction of. These two. Oh, so what, what engine are you guys using? Is this custom made? This is, this is Unity 5. Oh, really? Wow, okay. Yeah. So yes. now I immediately have a question. Um, okay. So a very, uh, many months ago, um, so I, I develop like boring things. Like I work on virtualization, cloud storage, virtual compute, that kind of stuff. Things that are so like low level that uh, anything that's high level is like a huge mystery and a huge... Um, I get very geeked out around that stuff because it's like, I love how do you low do level this? stuff. I started there, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Low level yeah, low levels I, I was, I was coding in uh, assembly when I was. Oh my god. Yeah. I've done it <laughs> so, once. I, I made a 2D platformer in college in on Game Boy Advance's ARM seven and ARM nine. Nice. That or ARM five and ARM seven, I should say. That's cool. That was <laughs> fun. So I can. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> But so yeah, what, what's the question? But, Sorry. but so, um, uh, which we call it, uh, you know. So I played around with the Unity engine a little bit, like many months ago, because I was like, "All right, guys, I'm gonna make a video game." And just you know, spoiler, I didn't because it didn't work out very well. Um, 
but you know, we played around with the Unreal Engine. We played around with Unity um, on the stream, uh, which was a great experience. But one thing that uh, you know, uh, what what it looked like to me was as though Unity um, really embraced the 3D games, but not so much the 2D games. Now I know they released like a uh, with the latest Unity update. They up, they created some kind of 2D platform thing where you can create the, add the sprites and backgrounds. Um, I wasn't able to figure it out. It almost seemed like it was non-existent. What was your experience with it, making a 2D game? Uh, we were kind of lucky because we we started using Unity when uh, with 4.6, I think. And that was the version that introduced the whole 2D pipeline, the mode, whatever you call it. So oh. you can just now, you can just, when you create a new project, you just select Oh, this is the 2D game, and ah. bang, everything is done for you. Oh, wow. And you don't have to do anything, you know, custom. Of course, you can change whatever you want, but uh, everything is set up for you to do, uh, to make a 2D game, so. Oh, wow, that is good. That yeah, is nice. but, I, but I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that, you know, earlier versions, it was, you had to use a lot of tricks. Yeah, and, it really was. I remember we tried yeah. messing around with it, and it really looked like they were like, okay, you have to set the camera to look at, you know, yeah. a straight angle. Yeah. Then you create like a exactly. background tech, like you make 3D flat objects and then you have yeah. to put the textures on it. And I was like, Which this is, is still like this, I mean, it's, but it's more like, uh, how to say, uh, fine in a way. It's like, ah. it's clear, you know, the tool is aware of the fact that you're working in 2D. Oh, you know, interesting. To, to, okay. To it, you know, it's like, um, okay, well, that that's actually really nice and actually caught a big relief because it's, you know, um, I know that the, you know, there's other um, tools out there today. Um, one of them's escaping my mind. Um, game maybe maker? someone in chat knows. Oh, Game Maker, yes, there's that. Ga is Game Maker any good? Would, is that something you would ever recommend a, a new, uh, uh, <laughs> new developer? I used it once mm -hmm. to make a game, a small game for the Ludumdar game jam. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, I also once a year, once a year, I teach at the university here game design. Oh and, wow! Uh, they some some of the students use game maker, so I have a bit of experience. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's it it's does very seem old like cool. It's really weird. Right. Uh, I mean, it doesn't almost seem like a. I mean, I don't even know if you could actually program things in it. It yeah, almost you seems can, like. You can. Oh, you can do that. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, you you can, but it uses its its own language, which is oh. really bad. And also, the thing is that if you don't know anything about programming, you know, you just want to prototype something really quick. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a good idea to to mm. use Jamie. Uh, yeah, to if me, you it already was... have some background, then you should probably go for Unity. Ah, and yeah. if you're really good. Uh -huh. Then you should go for a real landscape unity. <laughs> also, <laughs> that, unity. though yeah. that's an interesting. That brings up an interesting question, which is, um, you know, how? What are the? So that's kind of the difficulty curve. That's interesting. What? Well, so, uh, and so now I'm eager. What? You now, <laughs> if you went with, what is the big difference between, let's say, Unity and Unreal from your experience? Um, what is it that? Because clearly, Unreal Engine looks freaking amazing. The toolkit yeah. looks great. Um, I know the common complaint with Unity, and most of this has to do with the asset store, is that games made in Unity have a certain look and feel, and <laughs> even to the point where it's not even the it's not so much the programmers complaining, or the developer or the the um, artists, but it's actually the players themselves are like, oh, it's another Unity game, <laughs> and yes. immediately they're like, I don't want to play this anymore. Yes. And and yes. sorry for those guys because you know they did make a great tool, but um, unfortunately yeah. that's what comes with it. Um, it's it's exactly like that. I can, I can spot any game made in Unity. It's, it's so easy. <laughs> oh man. I can, I cannot really pinpoint what it is. It's probably the lighting model. I don't know. It's something. Ah. But but in general, it's just that Unreal is a is a product product of a higher quality. In general, I see. Uh, so, 
but, it, but it's tailored for for expert programmers, for professionals, I would say. Oh, if you, if you start from zero, you don't dive into Unreal because that's crazy. Ah, the amount of things you have to learn is so huge. And also, it uses C++, not C Sharp. And uh -huh. C++ is, you know, it's a bit it, more it's a harder in a way. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's, Memory it's less for gearing, you know. So, if you know what you're doing, I would go for Unreal. We didn't go for Unreal because Unreal doesn't have a good support for 2D yet. Ah, so, okay, so I just re realized where my bad decision first came from. Because we actually stopped using Unity because I was annoyed by it. And we said, all right, you know what? Unreal, that's the new thing. Let's go with it. And it still does have the, you know, put the background 3D object, paint some things on it. And it just never looked right. Um, but that that's some great information i'm sure there's some people who are like writing this down right now and are like okay <laughs> scrap our project let's go yeah, exactly <laughs> now my my next game it will probably be in 3d and i mm -hmm. will use them oh excellent have it do you i, now... I actually I, I kind of hate unity if i to be honest um mm -hmm. i don't really enjoy using it and whenever i like play a bit with unreal i'm like ah oh, this is like another world is so so good just opening the tool you know everything is so consistent is so well done mm -hmm. unit is just oh my god <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a pain but of course it's it's a great tool as well i i i shouldn't really well so how is the support for it um were there points in time during your development where you had to um you know you know let's say you were having trouble with something were they how was their support for you guys uh so we don't have a much experience with like direct support mm -hmm. even if we were paying customers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now it's free but at the time it, you know you had to, but we are also still paying because we we don't want the splash screen you know yes maybe we can this person so uh so we just use Google, and then you, they have this answers.unity, you know, whatever ah, mm -hmm. this thing. Um, you can kind of find everything there. Mm -hmm. But uh, like two weeks or three weeks before release, mm -hmm. they updated the Unity, and we updated as well. And uh, they broke something in the rendering pipeline. Oh, so, no. On Windows, yeah, it was like resolution changes were, were not working anymore. It was just a mess, and we were like super worried, like, okay. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do now? Time. <laughs> oh, my yes, God. Yes, we are completely screwed. And so we got, uh, because when we went to Gamescom to, to show the game in, in August in, in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, we met one of the actually, guy, one, one guy from Unity that is actually working on the rendering pipeline. Mm -hmm. So we talked to him directly. He was very nice, and he promised to fix this, you know, before before uh, the release. release. Yeah, and they, and they actually did. So it was oh, that's got to be did, a like, huge release. Two days before. Like, oh days. god, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. We were like, oh, god, okay, okay, come on. <laughs> oh my god. But uh, yeah, so I mean, they're, they're, I, I guess they're like nice people as as, as everyone. Well, you know, uh, with, but... with anything else, there's always, you know, um, different organizations, different software tools have, have different sized teams, right? And yeah. and sometimes, you know, Unreal clearly, like, I don't think Unity actually makes games. They just license things out. Whereas Unreal's got a huge pipeline of, a huge portfolio, I should say. So they've got all yeah. the games that make the money. They've got the, which also yes. serve as demos and effectively internal QA guys, right? Because if your internal guys are making games, then immediately the engine team can get feedback for them. Whereas Unity doesn't yeah. have that, which, you know, um, <laughs> you know, which is normal. Um, unfortunately, you could say the same about ID soft, id software. I don't even know if they're, did they license anything anymore? Mm, I'm not aware of that. Yeah, I'm not aware of it either. I imagine they kind of gave up at some point. They're like, all right, 
You know what? Unreal here, just take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Um, it, it's so weird now that the war between you know Unity and, and Unreal, it's just so crazy. They just everything is free now, right? So they <laughs> yeah, they they're just fighting, I guess, I guess uh, over like content or like you know right. whatever. The price is over. It's just free. Right? Yes. Which is actually yeah. really, really um, nice. Um, it is nice for us, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I think they... And I think I want to say Unreal may have been the... I don't remember who the first people... This, was it Unity or was it Unreal that was the first to announce uh, free licenses for Unreal. game? Unreal. It was Unreal? Unreal? Well, so that is... And Unity had to do it like the day after, basically. <laughs> yeah, I remember it was like a very like quick <laughs> transition. It wasn't like, <laughs> yes. you know... Um, and and it's it's beautiful because those guys are effectively enabling new indie developers to try things out. And not to mention, I can imagine there's people who are in college today, and um, you know they have a desire to get into game development, um, but they don't have the tools at their disposal. At least this was the case, you know, a couple of years back. And now they can just go pick up, go go and download directly from their website use the tools that professionals are using and potentially um become game developers um yeah not to mention small studios who want to make the game but can't afford it because you know if you wanted it id licensed for the quake engine or anything even remotely like that it would cost you a shit ton of money <laughs> oh yeah 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 you still have those engines like you know frostbite uh... mm -hmm. Avalanche, this kind of, you know, Just Cause, the ah. engine using Just Cause, this kind of stuff. And they, they, you know, you can license them for, I don't know, $2 million, this kind of thing. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> that is something dish, that a they, indie they firm is like, not going to be able to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but those are like an, another category of, of mm -hmm. engine. Oh yeah. Even above Unreal. Yeah, they're... Uh... Uh, so he, he mentioned that this game is made on uh, using the Unity engine. Um, so actually, so what other what other parts of your tool chain, um, like what other tool chains did you use? Was it all in Unreal? Did, like, did you use what kind of sound software did you use? What about for like the artwork? Uh, what were and what did you like and what didn't you like out of those tools? Mm, no, it's mainly Unity. Uh, Thomas is using Photoshop to draw stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it directly imports into Unity, and then Unity creates a uh, atlas, a sprite atlas, you know, to pack all the sprites into uh, one or two textures, basically. Ah, okay. Um, that's this is also I think the sprite packer is kind of a new thing. It, it, yeah, it came it came out this year at some point. So. Oh, uh, the atlas. And, yeah, the sprite packer, which creates ah. these atlases. Otherwise, you had to do it uh, manually yourself. Oh, really? Interesting, interesting. With, uh, with other tools, there are a lot of tools that do that, but it's nice to have it, you know, integrated. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, the... No, then music, of course, Amos is using, you know, his... Some professional uh, tools of some kind. I don't know if he's using Logic or Live or something like that. And uh, but then he just exports into wave files and we just import them. So and, how? And uh, yeah, and then we use Git on GitHub. Oh, I'm a big fan, though it's got a yeah. learning curve. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you can say that. I you know one of the things. Uh, <laughs> funny story. Um, so I, I I the company I work for it's a startup, but it was a startup of like maybe less than fifty people. And, you know, I was still learning Git, and my immediate reaction was, yeah, I think, you know, as the company grows, you might want to spend a lot of time on education because you can do some accidentally bad things, like, really quickly. <laughs> and, of course, um, guess who's the first one to do the worst thing? Myself. I ended up accidentally, um, effectively... So we used it very distributed-like. In other words... You know, we had one production, like, internal server, which had, the like, the master copy. Um, we had, um, you know, um, every developer had a copy of it, you know, of their local repository. And so what I ended up doing by accident is I accidentally git force pushed 
like a, a history rewrite <laughs> and like deleted like two weeks worth of work. I, and, and then I went home. I was like, oh, done with this bug. Let me just push it out, get force push. And then all of a sudden I get these emails like, what the hell happened? Someone just like deleted everything. And so we had oh, to go shit. and find someone who's about to leave um, and, uh, you know, get use their copy on their laptop. To like recover our like you know our oh latest. <laughs> oh, shit. Have you have you had that happen to you like at all? No. That's no. good. <laughs> it's a bad it's... time. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Um, so uh, guys, if you have any questions about Kingdom, now's a good time to start asking them. Um, you know whatever questions you have, of course. Uh, if you haven't played the game, feel free to ask questions about the game mechanics and stuff like that. I've been playing it in the background. <laughs> you might be wondering what I'm doing and why I'm running around on a horse. Um, there's many reasons for this. <laughs> uh, how did the original idea for this game come to life? Who, why, what, when? Okay, so the original idea was by Thomas three years ago. Mm -hmm. And then he made the flesh. Uh, Exactly how I'm not sure, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, then he developed it for almost a year, just in his free time, you know. Mm -hmm. it's just, I don't know. He was studying still, um, and then he released it, and it, it was picked up by Kotaku and uh, Rock Paper Shotgun. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, because it became kind of popular as a flash game and then as i already taught you, you know, then i contacted him and then... mm -hmm. is it now um uh some people are asking do the flags which can be removed in the pause screen have certain abilities the flags no yeah he's talking about the emblem i think oh word. i've never uh, seen um... this so you can basically pay in the in the kind of the beginning. I think this is the second upgrade when you get the tens. Uh huh. Yeah, when you when you first get the flag, right? Mm -hmm. If you pay the flag, then you are basically saving it. Yes, that one. And uh, and then if you if, then if you just restart a new game, you will always get that flag, unless oh. you delete it from the menu. It's just uh, it's just a cosmetic thing. It's just you know, okay, I like this emblem. I I want to keep it, and then you just pay three coins or something like that. Oh, I it's see. It's a bit of like a, a meta game, you know. It's like you can. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Many many games. Yeah. I actually hadn't and noticed the... it until just now. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it's part of the philosophy of the game, which is we don't explain anything, you know, how things work, all the mechanics and stuff. Uh, and this is also part of the discovery process, let's say. Ah, uh, yes, yes. There are a lot of things that we thought we wouldn't discover for, for a while. Mm -hmm. But then <laughs> the day after release in the forums, you know, everybody was just already talking about everything. They they, they found out everything in one Well, day. yeah, the, the more players you have, the more tinkering yeah, ends up occurring, know. I guess. <laughs> we were very optimistic with this. <laughs> It's fine. I mean, it's totally fine. But, uh, did you, for example, <clears throat> do you know that you can uh, select your character? Wait, wait. What do you mean, really? Yeah. So you don't know, for example, how to do that. You can do that. Interesting. It's kind of a secret thing. But also, this it was just what it took one day for people to find. Oh, out. really? Oh my God. Well, and you know, one person tells the next person. Next thing you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, this is actually bad. I'm so for those of you who have not, have not seen this game yet, I'm on day night ten, and I half built a wall. Every five days, there's a shit ton of people who come out and try to make my life miserable, and they're about to come out right now. Oh god, this is bad. Oh god, will I survive this? I don't know. And by the way, the nights get worse every time. I think everyone yeah, died. Yeah, this is already. a blood moon. Yes, a blood moon. This is that is the day I fear every time I play this. Something very interesting with this is, for example, the the idea of the blood moon mm -hmm. was introduced basically two days before release. Oh, really? Yeah, as in 
we had, you know, the whole game and with this, we, we were calling them boss waves, mm -hmm. but we didn't think about the, the moon or anything like that. Then mm -hmm. some of our testers suggested, you know, to, to add kind of some kind of sign to tell the player, you know, that, ah. okay, this is going to be, you know, a bad night. Uh -huh. And then uh, I think Thomas came up with the idea of just painting the moon red. Mm -hmm. But we didn't come up with a with a name, the Blood Moon, right? We just said, mm. okay, let's just, you know. And then after release, basically the community named it, named this, and oh wow! And now it's a thing. It's just everybody just talks about this Blood Moon thing. It's one of the most important concepts in the game. <laughs> Finally, we were like, okay. <laughs> This is completely out of control now, <laughs> which is super fun. It's just fantastic when, you know, the, your players are just coming up with names and, and things. Uh, there was someone asking about knights, and uh, knights are in the game already. Mm -hmm. In fact, I haven't actually gotten mine just no, yet. Yeah. I'm kind of no, waiting for yeah. a, a bigger building force, because somehow they died. Um, actually, that brings me to a great question. Um, so today the 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 NPCs or kind of your your people, um, I guess, they are um, you know they kind of decide by themselves. The first, so if they're coming from the right-handed side, they're more likely to get a farm item because it's the first thing they encounter, right? It's ah, like you first... mean when you when you recruit the beggars and then. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And sure. and then similarly, if you recruit people from the left side, they're more likely to pick up a hammer. This is all assuming you know everything is pre-populated, like you've already pre-bought sure. everything. Um, yes. Is there so you almost have to like game the system a little bit to micromanage how many of a certain type of thing you have. Is there any plans to modify that so there's a bit more micromanagement as opposed to um, automation, I guess? I think that's the best way I can explain it. Uh, yeah, this was part of the design, I would say. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, cool. There are a lot of things like this that some people don't like and complain, but well, it's a this game mechanic. The, yeah, it's a game mechanic, and uh, you know, this is like a a one D game, right? Mm -hmm. There's only one <laughs> one dimension in this game, and so everything has to be laid out like horizontally. Mm. So there, we don't have much room for weird things or like for customization or. So that's why the layout of the castle is fixed. Ah. As well. mm -hmm. We didn't want to randomize that because that would uh, make things too much unpredictable. And it was sure. it, it was already a nightmare to, to balance this game. It's not even super well balanced yet. We're still working on it. Oh, I can imagine. Feedback. But but you know, at least we have that layout that is fixed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, if you want to recruit uh, new people and you want them to be archers then you make sure you don't have you know scientists on, on on the on the shop waiting for them right you know, right have to be... so someone asked what about the uh, merchants where what is their role in this uh, particular yeah game? the merchant is <laughs> which is a great uh, character by the way yeah this is, this is funny so he's uh he's just uh wandering around in the forest Mm -hmm. And then when you encounter him, you can pay him. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, four coins, and uh, he will come to your to your village and pick a random shop and replenish it. Ah, interesting. So, yeah, I, the way I've generally used it, and it's a hit or miss. Like I, I feel, yeah. and I like that me mechanic, which is you know we were just talking about. Like in my case, I kind of screwed up a little bit and um, destroyed a camp on the left and the right hand side. So I have one camp each. And so now I need to decide, do I destroy a portal or do I hold steady? Cause my base looks good in its size. And, but so on one hand, that means I have less recruits, which means I can sustain less damage. 
but on the positive side, I could have really good defenses. So maybe it's okay not to explore further. But now that merchant, let's say I need, like right, at, not right now I do, I need more builders. If I go and I'm deep in the forest and I find the merchant, I could say, okay, I'm really far in. I need, I know I might need more tools or something. I'm gonna go pay this guy um, instead of running all the way back. But if he goes and replenishes yes. my archers, now I don't have any more builders, so. No, exactly. <laughs> no but, but the thing is, uh, you would use the merchant when you don't have much money. Mm. So when oh, you really yes, want to yes, save yes. money, because you pay, you pay four, uh, but for example, to replenish the hammer shop, you would spend 12 mm -hmm. in total. Mm -hmm. But with this guy, if you're lucky, you just spend four. Mm. So you save eight coins, right? Which but is now, great in the you're, early you're game. You're playing now and you have like a full uh, uh, bag, right? <laughs> you have, you're super rich. Which is, so by really the way, guys, it. I'm extremely lucky right now. Um, this is a ton of money. Uh, normally, you don't get this much this early. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't really care about the match and you can buy whatever. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't use it when, when, I, when I have like so much money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I have to think about like, I, okay, I need, you know, tools in general and I don't have much money then, and if I encounter the guy, then I would, I would probably pay That's That was the idea in mm. general. And then, of course, as, as usual in this game, like many people hate the guy and other people love it. <laughs> it's, just, it's fine. <laughs> It's all right to hate, you know, hate a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think it's fine. Um, the, uh, so as, uh, all right, someone else had a command or a question in here. Uh, do, 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 do. Have they come up with a way to remove archers from an unused side of the map once you've destroyed the portals? Oh, I've noticed that myself too. Um, I think that goes back to micromanagement. Um, someone's asking, you know, I guess if, if for example, you needed you've already beaten one of the sides is there a way to get the archers to go on a particular side i believe this goes back to your point about uh it being a uh decision a conscious decision yes uh i'll answer another question first uh a guy was asking if we're planning to port it on linux it's already on linux on steam oh PC, nice Mac and linux and steam os and everything um so that thing, yes, uh, we're actually thinking about it. We are thinking about some kind of solution for that. Uh, we have, you know, a few rules that we cannot break. And the main one is um, you cannot control directly mm. your unit. Mm -hmm. you, you will never be able to do that because that's the core of the game. You can only pay things and and then indirectly, you're controlling, you're managing, you know, you. So we, we cannot have something like a command, you know, to or, 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 or a way to order, you know, them to come to the other side or anything like that. Sure, sure, really. sure. But we are we are thinking about something smarter because of course it doesn't make any sense to have like half your archers, you know, on on a site that mm -hmm. is, you know. Well, I could imagine too that over time, um, you know, that well, so it would change the balance. That's for sure. Um, I know, you know, when I beat this game a couple nights ago, or a couple, uh, I think, uh, two weeks ago now, um, you know, I saw the same thing. But if if my, if I was allowed to move my archers after beating one side and pretty much once you get two portals down you're likely making a lot of money at that point and if now mm -hmm. all of a sudden i can move all my guys to one side now mm -hmm. you're pretty much going to auto win the game unless yeah. the portals got like you know if there was a more extreme mode where the portals got even harder you know um uh with each one you killed and maybe you know some super boss unit in the last portal comes out like the mother mm -hmm. or something Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, we went through many iterations with this, with the balancing. We were playing with uh, both the wave that you get when you kill the 
when you destroy the portal, you get mm -hmm. this, we call it a collapse wave, because when the portal is collapsing, mm. and uh, you get, so you have basically the, the normal wave every night, mm -hmm. then you have the blood moon wave, and then we have the defense wave when you start attacking a portal, the portal ah, reacts. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Then you have the collapse wave, which is when you kill the portal. And then at the end of the game, you have also something else that I won't say for the people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who want to play. And um, so we, we played a lot with all the balancing. And yeah, we kind of settled to what it is now, but we are still looking into it. Because sure. now we have a lot of feedback and we can, you know, make more sensible decisions. Someone said maybe you could have a trumpet blower on each side to rally your troops. I'm, I'm guessing this is a... Uh, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Is there a Something trumpet like blower that. today or is that just a... I don't think there's a trumpet blower, right? I, I, that, that, I'm guessing that was probably just a suggestion. Yeah. Um, How much is the game and is it early access? No, this is a full release. Yep. Um, I don't remember. Yeah. How, mu how much is, does this game go for today? And it is on the Steam page. Five ninety nine. Five? Really? Okay. Nine nine ninety nine. Wow, that is a nice price, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think we we nailed the price tag. Everybody was really happy for it. I, I'm really glad you did that. I know uh, a lot of times, especially a new game, because you never know, right? Um, it, uh -huh. It's definitely a good entry level price for people who are a little afraid to spend money on a um, on an indie game, because you never know what you're gonna get. Um, yeah. Luckily, with this game, you get happily. Um, it's an exception. I'll, I'll put it that way. Uh, <laughs> a good exception. <laughs> um, guys, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask it in chat. Just write at Dasmedi. Um, if I missed your question, uh, go. Ahead, you can ask it. A uh, you know, you can ask it again. Um, so, is there? Uh, so you had mentioned that you know you have some ideas and updates. Uh, from these feet or you have some ideas that are coming in after the release and now that the release is out and you guys are looking into uh potential updates you're not going to say what which is cool i can't wait to uh -huh. to see it myself when the update um shows up on my steam uh steam button oh someone's asked is any are there any thoughts of having like a four pack or something like that Hmm, that's, uh, that's uh, a good question. <laughs> I haven't thought about it at all, so maybe, yeah. It's I'll... it's a pretty good idea. I know even uh, there, there's a lot of folks who, you know, you buy the four pack, you end up getting like, you know, four for the price, price of three, and now you can share it with your friends. Especially yeah, if there's a mechanic in place, which I would love to see where I can, um, and you probably have some of this data already. I don't know if you're collecting it like in the background and storing it. But let's say kind of a leaderboard. Um, and Steam sort of has it today. Like if I go into, you know, my thing, I can hit achievements yeah. and I can kind of yeah. like compare it. But, um, you know, almost like, a, hey, you are now like this in second place, place compared to your friends or. Um, yeah, absolutely. Actually, the leaderboard, exactly what you're talking about was uh, in the was one of the tasks that we, we wanted to implement before release but then we had to cut it out oh really that time. yeah that but it will really come exciting. for sure that that's not even a secret i mean it, it will come for sure because this is what people want you you know you want a way to uh, create competition in mm -hmm. a simple way without even you know going uh, bringing bringing up like the steam overlay or you know going to a website or this kind of, it has to be in-game mm. so and steam steam provides all the data you want so oh, wow we just need to implement it in the game uh, and then you can see you know your friends maybe the number of days they survived or, or mm. combined with maybe um, how many coins they had you know all this kind of stuff so some kind of score that uh, includes all the variables the main ah, variables. Yes. So, is there absolutely uh, is there any um someone asked uh is there could there be a different map in the future like winter map with harder conditions or something like that 
that also was in the plan, in the original plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 wanted to implement seasons mm. uh, completely, and that would would also affect the gameplay, not mm. only just you know statics, but. Um, We'll see. Maybe it's one of the things that we will do. It nice. depends. It depends. What about the uh, destruction or destroying towers to prevent archers from pooling in them and being useless? I guess what he's asking is like, so let's say, for example, um, you know, you create a tower and then you create a wall like many, like, I don't know, you know yards away or something. Now, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. that tower doesn't really do anything unless, you know, you're um your wall broke down is there any thoughts about like destroying it or maybe even another example would be you know you decided you got a little cocky and you decided i'm gonna build a, a wall really like and i did this by the way i'm gonna create a wall really far down there like down at the end and um you know get closer to the portal and then you find yeah. out your builders can never make it there in time so you want to like destroy it so that um you know for for strategic re reasons is there any any thought around that <laughs> so i agree that it's an issue uh but destroying things or canceling things is mm -hmm. one of the rules that we ah. don't want to break well that's good to know and there's nothing necessarily yes. wrong with that that definitely brings a it brings a different mechanic in place because now all of a sudden yes. you've created a new problem and now you have to solve it. And I yes. did end up solving it. It just took a little while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it doesn't mean that we won't do anything about it. You know, if people are really complaining and we see that it would be nice to have a way to maybe, um, let's say, redistribute archers in towers or something like that, then we will do something. I'm not saying, you know, no, no, we don't care, we don't touch it. It's right. just that the simple destruction cancel, you know, mm. mechanic won't be implemented. Mm. Uh, it's someone's against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, someone's asking, is, uh, what about controller support? Is that something that's in the game or... Yeah, um... it's, uh, it's in the game. Oh, yeah, I okay, use the I... controller now that I think about it. You know what, I'm going to actually, let me see if... Uh... If I power this on, I'll actually switch the controller. Uh, should actually work on the fly if you plug it yeah, in. There we go. It's working beautifully. In fact, oh, okay. And then the run button. Let's see. Uh, left and right triggers is to run. Oh wow! Wow, this is actually really comforting. It's super nice. I played this game on a on a Steam machine. Uh huh. On my TV, you know, sitting on the sofa, it's, it's crazy with the with the controller. It's so nice. And I like it's the fact really... that as soon as I powered it on, it's like working now. Uh, for those of you yeah. who are interested, um, I'm using the left and right triggers to activate uh, run and the move button. Uh, X is used for like putting the coins inside, you know, the slots to like build. Yeah. And then probably A, my my guess is that the A button will be used for like, um, well, no, actually that's it. It's just the X button is instead of down button. Um, as a dev, yeah. what is his record on how many days to beat the game? Yeah, <laughs> I was reading that. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I'm actually super bad at this game. Really? <laughs> yes, I'm not sure. <laughs> How did how did uh, that how did that work out <laughs> while you're developing? That's because um, when I when I work on it, so I have to implement something or I have to fix a bug. So my my workflow is always I code, I type something, I run the game, I test that thing, single thing. Oh, it works. Well, okay, done. Next thing, right? I never go. I never do a full playthrough. Ah. Of the game. Well, I do it sometimes, of course. Uh, but I I don't do it often enough to be a good player. Uh, but on the other side, uh, like, oh, this was a good. Was a good I I'm I might be dying here. Oh God. Yeah. This is an interesting. Oh, I made it. 
Yes! The good thing is I have a lot of builders too, so they're gonna help uh, save me a little bit. Um, actually, this is one so, of the coolest I, uh, things behind this game that I found, which is uh, there's this notion of um, there's a notion of because the map is randomized, um, having strategic points is very dependent on the map that's generated. So in my particular case, um, if you guys don't notice, is I haven't really found uh, the ideal spot is finding a wall like wait uh oh wait did it fall down oh no it didn't finding a wall like this where i built it and right behind it having a thing of stone so you can put like a a fort there so the wall protects the the wall protects the fort and the fort can do better damage to the the guys down here but in my case it didn't i got unlucky and uh i haven't found anything close by with that so my strategy is don't even create any forts. Now that might not be the best strategy, but it's the strategy that I've had to take on. And I like that dynamicness. It's this this game through this playthrough right now is much different from what I played uh, uh, before. Yes, uh, it's to give you know some replay value, of course. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 already like a roguelike. I would say this game because in mm -hmm. the beginning you you don't know anything you die soon so you restart a few times mm -hmm. uh, but then when you're maybe you finish the game you want to play again and at least you know the map is regenerated of course we are using some some rules so that things are not completely random otherwise mm -hmm. it would be maybe it, maybe it's impossible to win or something like that oh okay so that's that, good yeah that we we're we're uh, we pay attention to a lot of things when we generate them. But you can still get, you know, lucky sometimes. And right, right, right. You know, maybe, maybe. Is there, uh, someone's asking, uh, who composed the soundtrack and how long did it last? I know we asked a question in the beginning, but... Yeah. Um, uh, so, his name is Amos Roddy. Uh, he's from Portland. and. Um, oh, Portland, Oregon? Yeah. Oh, nice. And uh, he's a fantastic musician, <laughs> and, uh, a very, very nice guy. Um, he worked on this for six months, I think. Uh, not full time, of course, he's working on other games as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but he really liked uh, Kingdom and insisted <laughs> to work on this. <laughs> oh, that is and awesome. That's, that's maybe the reason why. We picked him instead of the others. Uh, he he really showed like uh, a genuine interest in, in the game, and he made uh, he, he did a fantastic job because the music fits so well, sound effects and everything. I can tell you like when uh, so we work on this game for maybe a year uh, mm -hmm. with no sound, no music, nothing. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Because you know it's always the last thing you have. And then we, 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 uh, yeah, we made a made a deal with him, mm -hmm. and he started producing sound effects. And one day he sent me the sound effects of the fire. Um, when you, how do you say, kindle the fire? Is that mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and I and I implemented the sound, and I pressed play, and I just, you know, I. I, I started the fire and I heard the, the sound and the game just came to life for me. It was oh, wow. that moment when I was like, okay, this is a game now. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I was like, wow, okay. Everything's, everything changed now. And, <laughs> so, uh, I, I, can, I can certainly imagine that feeling. Um, yeah. Now, I'm sure you knew that this game was going to be decent, but, you know, you put that little thing in. I mean, the sound effects and it really does do something special even with the coins dropping and stuff you feel like you're collecting them um i mean the visualization's great too but like the the clinking noise down to like people cl picking up the, ar the 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 bows yeah there's definitely uh there's definitely a kind of genius behind that yeah yeah absolutely and also like uh, i liked what he decided in the beginning Mm -hmm. uh, he decided that all sound effects um, should be 
like real, as in like samples from real life, and not mm. you know synthesized or anything like that, ah. except for the UI. And uh, so everything is actual, you know, like the coin dropping on the ground mm -hmm. is actually it's him dropping a coin on the ground and recording it. You know, it's all done like this. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. All, the fire and everything is, is like real life stuff. you know it wasn't until you mentioned it that i noticed that myself it's it, that is definitely I, I i think that hits an nail on the head that is what makes this game feel um alive it makes it because it, it's a 2d game it's clearly pixel art but I, I don't know it's it's interesting by the way we have a guy named edward who uh does he's a professional singer he's giving you his love and saying if you ever need, need a singer for a soundtrack, <laughs> he's your man. <laughs> Brilliant! Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, is there anywhere to get the audio from? Maybe you mean like a soundtrack? I think you guys yeah, have a soundtrack, don't you? Yeah, it's um, it's on say uh, yeah you can you can buy it on Steam. It's a DLC basically. Is a horse his horse? Yep, I. It's the queen's horse. You can actually play a queen or a king. Um, it randomizes at the beginning of the game. But, oh, oh, he's asking where can he get the sound drops from? I mean, it's part of the game, I imagine. <laughs> I, I doubt there's like a wave file sitting in the in the folder. Yeah, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, Unity puts everything into weird files, so mm. it's not us trying to hide anything. It's just it's for efficiency. If you were loading up wave yeah, files, yeah, it efficiency. would be uh, not good. <laughs> no bueno for FPS. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, I don't think there's a way to extract those. Let's see. Uh, will the AI human characters move faster in later updates, like running away from monsters or running and defending a wall? Um, I, I, I would expect that's a game mechanic, actually. Um, in fact, I've been using it as a game mechanic because you know if, for example, you go and get people from camps and you don't have a wall very close to that camp, well, you're now risking the chance that before yeah. the guy can even get back to the kingdom, yeah. Uh, yeah. he just got pooped on. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a mechanic. You have to be careful with that, yes. Uh, will there be snowy time for Christmas? Uh, maybe. Possibly. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> that would be, be a good time to, to uh, drop it, I guess. We, we had uh, for Halloween. So oh. the game was, was showing like a... Was using a... We call them trolls, you know, the, the little monsters. Oh, really? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, trolls with uh, with a pumpkin. Only, oh, only yeah. if you play the day of Halloween. Oh, it's I still in there. Uh huh. <laughs> now I gotta there, wait till next people. year. I'm gonna put that on my yes. calendar. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so yeah, we 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 will probably do. Uh, guys, if you have, do you have any other questions? Uh, oh, here we go. Any chance for flying mounts? Any chance they plan to implement a Z access for DLC? Oh God, I don't think that's a legit question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> the the parallax. I think it's called parallax mapping or whatever, with the uh, multiple backgrounds moving at different speeds. Um, it's called parallax. It is parallax. Yeah, it looks fantastic. It yeah, it definitely nice. gives you get that sense of like 3D. Well, not 3D, but the set. Uh, I don't know how to put it. It it makes it look alive. It a lot of it gives it that old school feel while at the same time um i, I love that way of art it just gr is great are there any plans on developing it further with more maps and challenges and whatnot he did touch upon that um i don't know if you want to say more uh in relation to that mm, question we will yes we, we we are still working on the game we will add content at some point i cannot say what Mm. When exactly? But That's probably yes. a good idea. The last, uh, last thing you want to do is promise something. And then like, no, listen, not, here's the vod of the interview. He promised this. And it's no, like, no, 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 no he no, didn't. No, no, <laughs> no. no. Uh, Rick and Morty Screaming Sun DLC. Oh, God. Rick <laughs> and Morty sound effects would be kind of cool, actually. Oh, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Uh, is there any plans to add multiple floors slash ground floor, second floor by ramps and such? Um, mm, I think no, there. I think so. uh, you mentioned it was a 1D game, and yeah, it's it clear that that's the the fact. Yeah, I think messing with that would be um, 
it, it may destroy it. I mean, it that's would one be thing. another game. <laughs> it would be another game, exactly. Um, you know, and, and I've seen this happen in the past where, you know, um, you know, a game does well, right? And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, they, some mechanic is added to it, and then all of a sudden, yeah, it doesn't feel like the same game anymore. Oh, and, yes. And now you've just taken... You may have broadened interest, but you may have just mm -hmm. divided away the the folks who yes, have come we, to love it. Yeah, we are trying to be super careful with that. That's why we have this like this list of rules that we don't want to break. Mm. So here's a great question right here. Um, so uh, there's what were some problems the devs encountered during development, and what advice would you have for a game develop a developer that's currently a university student in general or Thinking about getting a job in the industry, um, I know that's a bit loaded. So let's let's kind of <laughs> say you know let's say you're a brand new game developer, or, uh -huh. or you're looking to get into it. What kind of tips and advice would you would you give them? Maybe in terms of things to look into, or or you know whatever. What are your words of wisdom? <laughs> so, I for game development, I don't believe in. Uh, even though I, I, I teach in the university, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I think that you can learn all the things you need just by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say also, uh, even if you want to be like an indie developer and, and create, design your own games, I would recommend to get try and try to get into a, a studio, maybe a medium-sized studio or a triple A studio. It doesn't matter because there you actually learn so many things, mm. and not just you know technical stuff. It doesn't matter if you're a programmer or an artist, but you learn how to work in a team. You learn uh, what really game development is, and. Uh, so so many important things and then you can maybe move on and do your own stuff if you want or you just stay there mm. but in general i don't think yeah university a university degree is needed uh of course it's up to you if you think you know i'm you very much i that, think we can but... be friends i'm not a big fan anymore of, uh... no <laughs> but I, i'm talking specifically for game development of course oh absolutely for many, you know, Absolutely. software, other kind of software, sure. Uh, you get and, Stack Overflow and you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But still, the important thing is you have to uh, work with other people that are better than you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from from uh, which you can learn. You know, right? They will teach you the way <laughs> of doing stuff. That's that's I think the most important thing. Uh, someone's asking so, uh, in real. Oh, sorry. Please go ahead. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I was done. Oh, um, someone asked you in chat. Uh, what about um, in relation to? Uh, so you mentioned that there's some updates that are planned. You're not going to say specifically what, but is there any? Uh, do you guys have a release uh, schedule of some sort that uh, you guys have thought about? Like any in a regular interval or? Um, uh, we uh, we have uh, let's say that we we will push uh, small updates like we are doing now maybe once a week something like that just mm -hmm. to fix uh, things and tweak the balance uh, but for the big updates yes we have a plan but I cannot talk <laughs> awesome but yes we have a plan um, one of the questions that came up in chat is. Uh, in relation to you know working with Steam in terms of it, it, does this do you use the Steam Kit or what I forget what it's called off the top of my head. Yeah, uh, Steam Works uh, SDK. Yeah, have you uh, used that at all with this uh, during development and how was that? Yeah, you have to use it to integrate uh, achievements like that. So ah. you must use it. If you don't want any of that, you don't have to do anything. Uh, you don't have to link to the if you just right. wanted to the achievement scheme. It's so the, the the SDK is in C so you need to use a a rocker for C sharp and for Unity. I found one it's called Steamworks. Oh uh, no which is very really nice. It's a free rocker. It's it's pretty simple I would say. No no big issues. No 
Yeah, it's fine. Um, are the not bad. Okay. Uh, are the devs planning for higher tiers of technology past the stone? Also, will they make an option to where the builders stay at the uh, catapults instead of traveling to a place where they head back to town? So, uh, <laughs> I can help answer that maybe from my game because, you know, I imagine. So my strategy is that I try to build a farm near the closest wall, and one of the strategies around that is. Um, the builders actually hang out at the farm, so they aren't going to go back home. They're going to stay by the farm to keep this wall intact. Now, ideally, I'd want a fortress right here so that they can shoot into this section. Oh, God. No, don't attack him! Oh, God. All right. Rip that guy. <laughs> Are they hiring? Well, I mean, their game's out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will hire. <laughs> oh, there you go. It, well, so if someone is interested, um, what is the best website to, to use to get in contact with you guys? What form of communication? Uh, either Facebook, uh, I think it's the game on Facebook. I mean, it's called Kingdom, but you know, in, in the past, in the Europe. Excellent. Um, and on, on Twitter is uh, uh, Noyo NL, which is Thomas Twitter. Ah, okay. Um, um, but one thing, so that what you said is, is correct. So if you want, you know, to keep builders around, you know, you don't want them to go back every time. You need, far, um, yeah, farmhouses level two. Mm. But catapults, uh, they are the next thing we are working on. So then probably the next patch will fix a lot of things about cut. This I can say. Uh, someone asked uh, once again, can you destroy the walls and stuff? Uh, you cannot. I think we, uh, I, I think you mentioned that is a yeah. intentional thing because at that point you're adding a level of uh, complexity that takes away from the game, I guess. Yes. Yeah, that's one of the rules. <laughs> um, Cool. Well, I think I'd like to thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, this was a fantastic interview. I really love this game. I cannot wait to see um, some more updates to it because it's so much fun. And having more of something that's great is always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, maybe I can write on the chat. Mm -hmm. Uh, the links to yeah yeah please know. go ahead let me um let me uh can we permit him please let me just do that real quick because um i've got a bot in here that generally will um automatically you know we get viruses and stuff that get posted yeah of course uh let me because if people want to get in contact you know with i'm usually the one who replies on facebook so let me actually just mod you this makes it easier there we go. Done. You have full powers oh, now, sir. <laughs> I can ban everyone, right? <laughs> Guys, be careful. All right? <laughs> yeah, so this is the... Um, that's the link to the Facebook page. Um, and then I'll also give you... The... <laughs> cool so this is a facebook page and then we got the twitter oh there we go excellent i hit that follow yeah. button oh this is thomas okay so thomas is the one who originally came actually before you go how do i look I at the original i would love to see how <laughs> it looked like uh that in the picture it was me it wasn't thomas oh um, this is you right here in the picture oh sorry no i mean okay it's the lag you know Oh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So, sorry, that's Thomas, but on Facebook, that, that picture with the other guy, it's me. Ah, okay. That, the other guy, that picture is the developer of Super Hot. Do you know this game? Ah, uh, yes, that is a fantastic game. Yes, so I was having fun with him at uh, the Paris, Paris Games Week. So, um, I, I forgot to mention this. So, this game is currently available for the PC, the Mac, Linux. Are you, You're bringing it to Xbox, right? That's the... Yeah. Nice. Uh, sorry, you were asking 
Uh, oh, the original, oops. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, It'd be interesting to see, like, where this game came from. Um, do, do, do. Actually, I can probably... Oh, here it is. Kingdom website. Oh, wow. Kingdomthegame.com? No, no. Uh, yeah, that's that's our website. It's not the. Oh, it's not. Oh, right, right, right. Flash portfolio, kingdom devlog. King... Oh, okay. This might be it right here. Yeah, it is a bit hidden. <laughs> oh, this is neat. Oh wow. Oh, you could definitely tell a level of, uh, there's definitely a difference. Did you find it? Yep, I found it. Okay, then. I'm gonna yeah, you, I didn't mention it, but we also had a Kickstarter one year ago. Ah. We canceled because uh, we won the Nordic game. Ah, um, yes, so yes. Really. Well, I'm glad you did, because I know sometimes Kickstarters can be questionable um, or can be yeah, difficult. Yeah, exactly. You end up putting yeah, a forced uh, time limit on yourself. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it says coming to mobile iOS because that was the original plan. <laughs> <laughs> because I was making games on iOS at that time. So. Oh, my God. This... It, will, it will also come uh, to mobile, of course. Oh, okay. Oh, this is we really interesting to, to look at with... Um... <laughs> this is very interesting to look at. Yeah, it's it's nice to compare the two. Oh my god, these these sound effects. Now I see Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now I see the um let me zoom in a little bit. The sound effect difference is huge. Now I'll give them sights to build Oh my god, this is this is fantastic. So I can see what you meant earlier about um one of the uh early like it's got the game noises, like the beep, the boops and the beeps. Oh yeah, yeah. There's all like chip. Oh, that is fantastic. Sound effects, yeah. Um, well, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I had a lot of fun. We can't wait to um, see the update. Um, I know hey guys, I hope you liked that clip. If you want to see more awesome content, be sure to hit subscribe. And let me know what you think by hitting the like button or, you know, leaving a comment down below. Catch you later.